To prepare the standby system, first we have to create the directories that will be used by the database. So I'll switch as grid user and create two directories oradb underscore s2 and oradb under the data disk group. Remember we have to do this in SRV2 machine. In the second step we have to create a p file and this p file has only a single parameter in it dp underscore name and you set that parameter to the primary database instance name which is in our case aura db so you just run this command as oracle to create the file In the third step, we copy the password file from the primary database system to the standby database system. Verify the file is there. Yeah, the file is there. All good. Also, I'm going to copy the tnsnames.ora file from the primary database system to the standby system. First, I took backup of the existing file and then I will make the copy from the primary database. Then I'll configure the sqlnet file, if it's not there, it's already there, so no problem. After that, you create a static database registry in the listener file. As is the case with the tnsnames.ora file, you cannot copy and paste from the PDF file into the putty session. Therefore, either you enter the code manually, or you can copy the files from the lecture documents. I will attach the listener.ora file document to the lecture files so that you can download it and use it, or you can enter it manually. It's uh, up to you. I have here the file in the notepad, so I will copy and paste from the notepad into the putty session. So with this settings, the oradb underscore s2 is statistically registered in the listener. You need to restart the listener. As you can see, the instance oradb underscore s2 is registered in the listener. We reach to the final and the most important stage in our uh, practice, which is to create the standby database. To create the standby database, the first step is to start up the standby instance. I will switch to Oracle uh, user. Remember, we are working in SRV2. The green uh, session. And create the directories that will be pointed by the uh, parameters start up the instance remember this instance will read from the uh, p file that we have just created now we have to run the most important command in our practice 
which is a duplicate command in our man session. This command is our ultimate target of this practice, which is to create the standby database. So I'll run our man, connect as target to the primary database, connect as auxiliary database to the standby instance, and finally run the duplicate command. If you concentrate on the duplicate command, it creates a standby instance from the primary database online, and it will create the SP file from the primary database. It will set some parameters like DB unique name, control files, DB create files destination, DB create online redo log destination, etc. in the SP file. So this simple single command will do the job for you. It will create the database, create the SP file, set the parameters, and make the database up and running for you. It will take some time to execute. Eventually, you should see a message like that, which means that a database has been successfully created. Let's verify that the instance is uh, up and running. As you can see, the data files have been created in the uh, data disk group under oradb underscore s2 folder. We can also check the standby redolog files. As you can see, we have four standby redolog groups created for us. However, each of those groups have two members in it. By default, Oracle will create two members in each standby redolog group. This is not needed. We don't need multiplexed standby redolog files in each group. So we will get rid of one member of each group. This query verifies the multiplexing. As you can see, the standby uh, Redolog group has eight members because we have four groups. Each group has two members. So the total is eight standby Redolog files. We have to make them four. We're gonna uh, drop four of the uh, standby Redolog files. As you can see, we have uh, some members in the data disk group and some members in the FRA disk group. So I will delete the members which are located in the data disk group. I lose the command alter database, uh, drop standby log file member, and then followed by the full path of the standby redo log file. Remember, we need to drop the files which are located in the data disk group. Be careful when you do the drop. Don't copy paste from the FRA uh, files. So we have uh, dropped four members of the uh, standby redolog files. Now we need to set some parameters in the standby database. You just copy and paste the commands from the document. Remember, you need to hit the enter for each command. This is probably the most important uh, parameter to set, which is look uh, archive destination two. This parameter, as you can see, points to the primary database. This will be used after switch over. At the moment, this database is running as a standby database. It will not send any redo log file to the primary database. But later, when this database becomes primary database, it will use this destination. You can see the valid for option. It uses online log file option and the primary role. So it means this destination will 
take effect it will be active when the current database will operate as a primary database in this case it will communicate to the RDB and send the redlog uh, files to it because after failover or switch over the RDB will be a standby database not a primary database uh, as you can see valid for here is very important to be set to make the log archive destination uh, work properly in the database you need now to start the apply services the command is as simple as alter database recovery managed standby database disconnect so the apply service now is up and running we need now to verify our configuration so in the standby database i will run this command to check the current sequence of the standby redlog file it reached to sequence number 61 on the primary database i gonna switch the online redlog files remember i need to run this in the uh, primary database not the standby database and on the stand that in the standby database i have to run the command again same command as you can see uh, the sequence number has been uh, incremented also you can inquire the processes that are running as you can see we have mrp process running which is performing the apply services in the standby database also we have the rfs uh, running in the standby database which is uh, responsible for communicating with the primary database and also we have an archive uh, process which is responsible for archiving the standby redolog files we have to perform some post creation steps first we have we need to uh, configure the archive log deletion policy in rman in both databases this is required because we don't need the ar archived redlog files to be accumulated forever in both systems and take uh, disk space so you need to configure this policy so that all uh, the redlog files that uh, have been sent to the standby database will be eligible for deletion according to this policy so i'll uh, run arman utility in both databases and execute the uh, command We need to fix the oracle sid variable in the bash profile file in the standby system we need to change it to aura db underscore s2 next we have to enable the flashback database in the standby database as you can see the flashback database is disabled in the standby database although it was enabled actually in the primary database so you need to enable it we received this error because the apply service is up and running we need to stop it before we enable the flashback database to stop it you can run the command uh, over there underneath alter database recover manage the standby database cancel i'll fix this in the document itself but at the moment we can simply i can simply uh, run this command
So I stop the apply process and now I can enable the database flashback. And the last step we have to register the standby database in Oracle uh, Restart. This is very useful because uh, Oracle Restart will take care of uh, restarting the database automatically when you uh, reboot your machine. So first we have to shut down the instance. And then I use the SRVCTL utility to register the database in the uh, Oracle Restart configuration. Just to have a look at the options that we have used, minus DB is to define the Oracle uh, instance name, which is in this case OraDB underscore S2. Also, Oracle Home is to define the Oracle Home. Uh, start option is mount by default. Standby, standby database should be started in mount state. Also, we define the stop option as immediate. And finally, you define the full path of the SP file. run the command and it is as simple as that now we need to test uh, this uh, configuration you, you you use srvctl to start up the database yeah let's check now the status of the database here you go the database is up and running so that's it we have uh, successfully created uh, an Oracle physical standby database, which is a replica of the primary database. And this database is running in maximum performance mode and uh, it uses the MRP process to apply the services. I'll show you now the procedure to shut down the system. First, you need to stop the standby database. So the procedure to shut down the system is first to uh, shut down the database. Then as root, you shut down the appliance. Shut down minus H now. You do the same for the primary database. Shut down the database first using immediate option. And finally shut down the appliance. So this way we have shut down both systems. After shutting down the appliances, we need to save them in a folder. Before taking copy of the appliances, I'm, I'm going to remove them from the Oracle VirtualBox. So right click each uh, appliance and select uh, remove. When you select remove, make sure you click on a remove only button not delete all files, otherwise you will lose everything that you have done. So you do this to all the appliances, remove only from Oracle Virtual Box. We don't need them there at this stage. I create a new folder called Practice One Physical Standby, and I will move the appliance folders into that folder. This folder now has the two appliances and we will use it for future practices. I hope this guide would uh, help you to successfully create a physical standby database. If you have any question, please don't hesitate to contact me. Thank you.